Thank you very much. Um, so if I gave you $50 right now and I told you I had two choices, you are allowed to invest that in conservation biodiversity or public health, what would you choose? <laughs> I know where I am. Um, <laughs> My, the goal of the next 4.7 minutes is to get you to yes. I'm not, I don't think it's as clear a choice or that we even have to make a choice as much as, as we currently perceive. So I'm going to do this in two points. Um, first, I'm going to show you how biodiversity supports many services underpinning health until it does not. And second, I'm going to show you how biodiversity is the key to addressing grand challenges of global health, among others. The issue here is embedded in this biodiversity. So there are 1.4 million species that have been described on Earth so far out of about an estimated 10 to 30 million. 5,000 of those are mammals, and only a few million of them are microbes. But microbe diversity we know is an issue. We know we don't know how to describe it very well, well, very well yet, and we know that it makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere and resources. 60% of the Earth's biomass, 90% of bacteria provide good human services, only 5% do bad things. Give the bugs a break. So in a healthy ecosystem, there is a, there's a complex system that starts with biodiversity as the building blocks, works up through ecosystem kind of functioning, which is the factory, that goes up to the ecosystem services which deliver things that provide fundamental basis for human health. For instance, tropical forests and coral reefs provide over 60,000 species that help with medicinal, aromatic, and nutritional services to humans. A very good example is one of last year's Nobel laureates in medicine who uh, fused Chinese medicine, traditional, and um, modern biochemistry to provide our best and most recent cure for malaria or support for malaria. But not all of this is, is fantastic news. There's a lot of controversy about how biodiversity underpins human health. The dilution effect is something a lot of people talk about in studies saying it provides a buffer to transmission of Lyme, Lyme disease and things like that. And there's a lot more research to be done. Unfortunately, we, we live now in something called the Anthropocene. This is the term people are using for the pressure that us humans put on our environment. So in a natural system, we have all these services. In unnatural or or disturbed systems, we have stress. When stress builds up, it tends to cause um, a degradation of these services through a lack of resilience, which we've heard a lot about today. So when you build up stress, you lose resilience, and you lose the services that underpin things. And it results in big graphs like this, where you can see a bunch of different results that are becoming grand challenges like climate change, and you see their effects in humans. Some are direct in terms of direct impact on health. Others impact the ecosystem that mediates these, and others have long-term effects. Infectious disease is the thing that most people talk and care about, and there's a lot of literature now and a lot of good hypothesis-generated research on looking at biodiversity interaction with infectious diseases that we care about. So these things are very significantly related, and I could teach the rest of the semester and do on this, but I'm, in the next two minutes, I'm going to tell you about how this is also key to addressing the grand challenges in health. Um, Everybody here is, is aware of grand challenges, wicked challenges, whichever version you want to use. Um, we have, we're lucky enough at University of Minnesota to be involved in a $50 million investment by USAID and coming up with new ways to address these grand challenges, looking at how to develop new professionals in this. And I think that E.O. Wilson said it best when he talks about what we need for the future in this. And he said, we're drowning in information while starving for wisdom. The world henceforth will be run by synthesizers. Synthesizers, people who can put information together, think critically, and make decisions. And if you're trying to figure out where those synthesizers are, Maslow will tell you as you tell you most things, um, that it's at the top of that pyramid. But what are the rungs of the ladder or the pyramid that you get there? Health, safety, a functioning, um, happy society, and things like that. Things that ecosystem services provide uh, in order to get you to the top of that pyramid. So if you want to provide synthesizers to help solve the big global challenges of our time, then you have to provide the services to get them up that pyramid. So I tell you, Diversity affects, or biodiversity loss, directly affects human health and well-being. It indirectly affects human health and well-being by reducing resilience, so it's direct and indirect, and it directly undermines our, our striving to get up the pyramid into a place where we can address these grand challenges through people and their skill sets. If you want to join this conversation, there's a Facebook page called Biodiversity Doctors. Thank you very much. <laughs>